Most of them have very nice cosmetics. Although I will say that the uh, Kotaro Chaos Knight, not his best looking safe laner. Kind of the one bright spot it felt for the most part in game one uh, was that lone druid. And you can attribute that to the space created by the rest of Infamous, but Kotaro seemed to be positioned pretty well for the most part. Um, on the right pos position in the map as well, uh, as far as taking the early towers. But so some really good execution overall in those team fights. As Schofield gonna smoke himself up and roll forward, uh, looking to get a ward down. King Tekka, no ward on his person, so not gonna make his way up to the northern side of this Radiant Offlane. Benjaz just not opting to clothe himself for this match. He'll just stay still, damn it. Right. Now he stays still. Alright, I give up. So it looks like uh, everyone going to play it rather safe here as far as the first rune engagement. There is Dire Vision on the cliff, however, scouting King Tekka currently, and they're wrapping the Earth Spirit around, perhaps to try and get the roll initiation off. And this could be a dead mag. Roll coming through, it will ca it is indeed a perfect location. King Tekka not even gonna think of grabbing the rune and will be forced to skill skewer first, although that's not terribly uncommon for offlane Magnus. And so rune is gonna be secured, that'll be Two for two still, when all is said and done. As the Radiant were able to grab this bounty room. Theo Style with a nice block in the mid lane. We'll see how he fares against uh, the TA, who's got a decent matchup uh, and probably a slight advantage uh, versus the Puck overall. At least once levels start to get up, but has gone for the side blades first and good recognition from Leo Style to try and punish her uh, out of lane early with uh, no refraction. Get the full effectiveness out of his magic damage nukes nice denial there from pepita though Schofield, meanwhile in the top lane looks like he got skewered under tower is forced to salve here and the salve will keep him alive but gets rather low so king tekka styling already in this lane matthew battery assault out bottom lane onto stinger and gonna keep pace on him now they have a lift as well burrow strike comes through but this is gonna mean they can lift him back into the battery assault they have the blade fury as well stinger in trouble gave up first blood in game one and may just give it up in game two with the last tick of that blade fury nicely executed gank by both masoku and matthew and just in the nick time the rotation comes through from benjaz seven seconds until skewer is available here so king tekka just wants to continue trading, try and skewer them back towards the tower, and yeah, they are weary of the attempt this time, as he's already apparently successfully done it. Old Stinger didn't have the point in Caustic there, and Matthew feeling pretty confident to go snag away his rune. Already level two on the clockwork, uh, means he can get quite a bit done in this early game. Arcane rune in the river as well. Burl Strike gonna fly out bottom lane. Uh, as Old Stinger just cleaning up the wave. And Leo style 10 and 3 to the 6 and 2 against the TA. Of course, Pepita, uh, now that he's got a couple levels in refla refraction, this should get a lot easier as far as last hitting goes with the uh, extra bit of damage. love watching this guy laying on puck and I, I am keeping the eyes peeled on the mini map boys but uh, we've got a couple of off laners who are currently not present in their lanes uh, King Tekka has done the walk of shame it seems back to base as Matthew rotates up top and will take out uh, the ward though so well, well worth his while the trip is it seems meanwhile mid lane or spirit rotating through the puck the face shift's already been used by Leo style but he's able to dodge it rather easily it was 
not scouted as well, so perhaps just a bit of fortune there for the puck. Um, but he will continue to survive nonetheless. Matthew pressing forward, looking for the cogs, gets the bounce, at least burn the mana away from Pepita. Um, now, however, there is, okay, a clarity flying out. No bottle. And I missed the kill. Nice. Eyes peeled my ass. Dragon RP. Tranquil's up for Matthew, uh, so he's traversing the map rather quickly. And all things relatively even across the board. Perhaps the major gap, uh, if you take a look. You know, and relative matchups is that Stinger's got 13 CS on the Sand King and King Tekka's Magnus only sitting on four currently. However, uh, you got to assume some of those are definitely jungle creeps for Stinger, who's a little bit better at farming those. All right, invisibility rune for Matthew Papita is pretty low here. Gets the refraction off though, needs to start burning it, and now gets cogged in. Battery Assault will be there as well. TA in trouble, Illusory Orb comes through. Waning Rift is there, one more right click, and they'll miss the Rolling Boulder. Leo Style may have, it. yep, the Cold Feet is gonna proc here, Matthew, with the Battery Assault. Boulder Smash connects onto two. Rocket Flare does a little bit more damage, and now the Orb flying Leo Style though. Oh, he jumps over to the Earth Spirit and gets the big right click. Has a Magic Wand charge. And we'll be able to phase shift away huge plays by Leo Styles Puck. And this is exactly what I was talking about uh, in the draft screen as right on the five minute mark, Matthew's rotation will prove to be a successful one. They get the kill on the TA and take a three to one lead. Now bottom lane, Burl Strike is used. Stinger could be in trouble. Matthew's rotating in. They get the lift off and they'll cog him in with the Blade Fury. And that is a very well at risk sand king <laughs> detection is a good thing to have in dota 2 ladies and gentlemen and unfortunately for sacred sake they did not have it in that bottom lane into the shrine excel will go as okay somehow they did end up killing off stinger and they'll get that done with just a cog bounce and a rocket flare near the shrine. So good heads up play by Matthew to make that rotation over. And I've missed two of five kills. Fantastic ratio. Now mid lane, Psionic Trap's going to go out. And Burl Strike will connect as well. Leo Style's in a lot of trouble and is just dead. So simply right after I praise him for his puck play, we'll step a bit far forward. Is, you know, in his defense, lacking a bit of vision in this mid lane. Doesn't see much at all, and the dire side have quite a bit of information at their disposal. He'll style make his way back to lane as he dings level six, but Pita about half a level ahead of him, in fact. And with the double damage rune, he's going to get coiled up, though, in the mid lane. Papita now dropped down. There is a sentry on the ground for the Radiant, and this should be a dead TA, and indeed it is. So perhaps sporting a bit of hubris on the Templar Assassin after the kill, also holding onto a DD rune, and Matthew on the clockwork, much like he did in game one, going to punish a bit of an overstep. Her spirit for Schofield going to rotate in to at least soak some of this experience as his Templar Assassin has vacated the mid lane. Up to 20 last hits now is King Tekka on the Magnus, and that is right on equal with the Sand King. So he's closed that gap rather admirably. Pro Strike going to come through bottom lane. Stinger looking to clean up the wave, and they will find the Blade Fury there. He's going to take quite a bit of damage. Benjaz did have the Omni Slash, but perhaps the Sand King just slightly too tanky. If you get an unfortunate bounce back to that creep, it's only two jumps. So, Kotaro, we haven't talked about him much, and you know, 26 denies, 55 last hits, pretty darn good. So he's doing what's expected of him in this early game. Matthew uh, makes a rotation up, gets the Icy Vortex down and the Cold Feet. Uh, Excel does, excuse me, as he was looking for the Bounty Room. Cures hit for his side. Leo Styles going to bottle up an Illusion Rune on the Puck. And 
and Schofield again in the mid lane, soaking some experience. Actually, his Luxury Orb catches Vision of Excel on the Ancient Apparition as well. Um, but a little bit of deep vision for the Dire side in the top lane. So it doesn't look like they'll make any reactionary ro rotations uh, to the knowledge of the Ancient Apparition. Masoku, he's going to be scouted here. Uh, Stinger takes out some creeps. Take a look at the net worth for the first time here. Nine minutes into the game. And slight lead for Sacred accrued in the lanes. They do have a 5-2 to two kill lead. Orb was used mid lane. And Excel hanging around here. But the TA's off farming Ancients. Or Papita, as TA's tend to do. Working on a veil for the puck first item on Leo style. He does this pretty often and you know with squishy supports like the A and Earth Spirit and even to some extent the Sand King if his levels are uh, a little bit lacking. Uh, he actually is level seven at this point. Kick away from Schofield. As Leo style tries to whittle down this tower, but becomes rather difficult with the pullback on the creeps. Off to the other side, Pepito will go as he looks to stack this camp. And we'll have a brief pause here. See, I predicted the future, guys. I knew it would be brief. Leo style, thinking of making a rotation over towards the Ancients, but we'll at least for now pick up the Arcane Rune. Of course, it's an awesome rune to have on Puck. You get caught with the Psionic Trap. Blades will not hit him though and bottom lane they'll go in onto old singer nice cog bounce back will stop the sandstorm from channeling unfortunately it's out of range of ben has his spin but a couple right clicks rocket flare will finish off that sand king promptly and that drop for him is going to put king tekka right where he needs to be as far as being as farmed as his equivalent and now ben has well he wants to get to work here He's going to be given the empower and will do indeed just that. Meanwhile, bottom lane, they do kill off the clockwork and take a huge ancient stack away. There is an arcane rune for Leo style though, as he's going to orb through and think about fighting this. They are going to bring in a few more heroes. Masoku, namely one of them. The reality rift back the puck. They get the stun onto him and a huge mount strike kills him off. Now Masoku nearby in trouble as well. He's going to get dropped. They do not use the RP, and this is going to mean not only the big Ancient Stack, but two kills as well. Nice body box by his own illusions. Kotaro could have been in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Rocket Flare finishes him off from Matthew. Pepita still hanging around. Excel could be in trouble. Benjaz rotating in. They'll kill off the AA. And the rest of those Ancients are going to be Benjazes for the taking. Three big ones as well. So, heavy committal. For infamous they end up losing the ck because of it nice hook shot by schofield roll down to the low ground right into an illusory orb and sacred take the necessary precautions fighting around that uphill ancient area and drag infamous out long enough to kind of bring the ck down get matthew back into the fray and take a win Ben Jazz, you see him kind of pole vault up the net worth after that last little bit, farming both this stack and a good portion of the other ancient stack. N not something you expect as well as Infamous's side, you know. Maybe you do with a, a Magnus on the team, but in general, Juggernaut, uh, Puck Core, there aren't ancient stacks prepared usually, but Sacred doing an excellent job securing their economy here, knowing that... King Tekka's Magnus going to be able to provide that level 4 in power. We've seen this 4-3-1 and then 4-4-1 build a lot uh, with RP coming at level 8 or 9 recently on the Magnus, especially with, you know, cores that can benefit and which core doesn't benefit. All right, Reality Rift stolen and used by Masoku here. And he can at least bait this illusion. It does look like a, a real hero. And they will at least get a Chaos Strike out of it. 
That'll allow Leo style to feel safer with that chaos strike. Dude. Now jump forward, Hookshot is gonna find the CK. They'll fade bolt him up. They get the reality rift there as well. He has the armlet, but he's gonna be dropped down in the telekinesis and a nuke coming through from Leo style with the waiting rift finishes off a second hero. That'll be Schofield's Earth Spirit. Not the greatest push lineup. Uh, this triumvirate of heroes so very unlikely to get the tower off the back of it but a nice couple of kills and matthew drops down a ward for the radiant that scouts pepita currently um, but it does look like the radiant unit will convene around the shrine um, for a little team bonding experience meanwhile benja's just farming up mid finishes up the yasha and i want to say has an ultimate orb flying out he indeed does feels that farmed on the juggernaut 7700 net worth and is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from that Manta. Hop, skip, jump. Looks good. Manta style recipe in base. In the meantime, Masoku's stacking up the Ancients for him as well. And Rocket Flare scouts Schofield's Earth Spirit, but that'll be all she wrote. Fourteen hundred gold in the pockets of King Tekka on the way to his blink dagger. As far as his equivalent, Stinger has one. This could be a major tool for Infamous Society. As he queues up the epicenter, and they're looking into the Magnus. This will be an easy kill. Meld Strike will finish him off with authority for Papita. Epicenter blink revealed as well. Under the cover of smoke is Leo Style. Has a veil available, but it's very close to the blink tiger i'm not sure if they want to fight this veil flies out illusion doesn't connect onto much hook shot back though is going to isolate the ck and with the blade fury on top of him he cannot armlet toggle ice blast seem to have whiffed as well nice pro strike and the magnetite coming through though they're taking a lot of damage and two will fall simultaneously that's going to be leo sal and masoku now matthew in trouble pepita finishes him off ben jazz out out by his lonesome does get the spin off though and a jump forward from magnus finds the rp do they have enough to kill the ta they do even with the boulder smash from schofield the return of king tekka to the top lane will tip the balance to make it at least roughly even. It's going to be 500 net experience going the way of Sacred, but gold is rather even. Benjaz, though, surviving for most of that, uh, is going to end up with 438 extra gold. Beautiful Burrow Strike there uh, from Stinger. Else, that engagement goes a lot worse for Infamous. Right on top of the Magnetize as well. They missed the Ice Blast before that. Or at least miss most heroes. It looked to me as if the Ice Blast did not connect. <laughs> I don't know what that means, guys. I do know what XD means, roughly. Oh, well, Phantasm used. And Matthew gets the cogs off. Icy Vortex is there. He hooks away. Right click following. Well, Stinger in trouble now, and will burrow through. Ice Blast going to fly. Masoku does get caught by it. He will drop as well. The two supports, a little bit of savior teammate syndrome there. Phantasm is used, but uh, not a major concern for Infamous, as they'll be able to take the tower with it more than likely here. And no real trades being found in sight across the map. I mean, Benjaz is certainly farming away, but as far as structural damage goes for Sacred, uh, they're not getting too much done as their tier one drops bottom lane. Now Earth Spirit rotating in towards the mid, Benjaz. Nearby, Kotaro comes in, doesn't even have the mana for a Chaos Bolt, so. Mimel, bottom lane, Masoku teeping into the trees. We'll get a steal off. It is going to be the Refraction. Meanwhile, mid lane engagement breaking out, and with the coil, they'll be able to bring down the Chaos Knight. Jump forward, RP's gonna find another. Leo Style is there with his full complement of spells, and a couple of more right clicks. Well, the urn is there. They have the shrine as well. Do they want to continue to chase? Leo Style nearby. The shockwave connects. Leo Style is able to jaunt out. Psionic Trap is waiting for him there, though, and he's got a phase shift blink nicely played by Leo. He even jukes the cameraman. And we'll make it up to the north. As I mentioned, 48 times so far since the draft, Leo Style is a very comfortable puck player. 
1,400 gold in his pocket, so on top of the Blink Veil. Matthew's got himself a Midas on the Clockwork, and the Blink Dagger, we saw it used there on top of the Earth Spirit. For King Tekka. CK does have his Echo Saber now on top of the Armlet, but well shy of the net, mar net worth mark that the Benjaz Juggernaut has set in this game. Almost 5k behind. And that is pretty much the entire lead right there is between the Juggernaut and Chaos Knight. Everyone else rather even. I've been saying rather a lot today. It Nothing much for the Radiant to take in this mid lane at the moment, as the tier one's already been eliminated. Okay, Cog's gonna be popped up by Matthew, perhaps feeling a little bit hesitant uh, to farm that right side camp, so doesn't want to make his way all the way over here. Cog's the creeps back in. May have actually saved his life with the Psionic Trap down. RP is level 2 now. Matthew's going to make his way back to base. Benjaz joining up with the mag has already completed a Scotty on top of his Manta. And he is a player who definitely favors Blink on Juggernaut. And he's got it queued up currently. Mid lane, Papita is actually all by his lonesome, perhaps kind of baiting uh, Sacred into thinking he has backup and therefore allowing them to go forward top lane. There's a CK here. He's all by his lonesome. They will skewer him back into the Omni. Beautifully executed. Benjaz just waiting patiently. And the counter initiation from Schofield was non-existent against the mag. This is going to mean they can take a look at Roche here as they do a little bit of dewarding around the pit. And despite Infamous being well aware of this attempt, there's not much they can do, it feels. Matthew, though, could be a little bit caught here. He gets a hook shot off onto the TA. Gonna get the urn charge off, but she blinks before Refraction is down. Schofield, he's out in no man's land, as is Excel. They'll bring him down. Epicenter coming through onto two and doing a decent amount of damage, but the follow-up is just not there. Coil is gonna keep Papita nearby. He will blink and snap it. Can they continue to pursue, though, as Matthew will bring down the Sand King? And it doesn't look like they'll be too intent on chasing down the TA, Rocket Flare. He's going to scout Schofield. He'll cancel the TP of the Rubik as Pepita rotating in from the north, thinking about the Rubik kill. But we'll think better of it. So no Roche for Sacred. But they will grab a couple of kills in that skirmish. And some good gold going into the pockets of Leo style. That's just the Earth Spirit kill. They also got the Sand King. Fortunately, could not continue to pursue the TA. Solar Crest is up onto Matthew. Any other big item pickups to speak of? Uh, looks like a pike being worked on by Papita after the Blink Deso. Ben has 1,500 gold on the way to his prospective Blink Dagger. Could always be, you know, something like a Maelstrom as well up against the CK. Both teams have done a, a stellar job as far as dewarding goes. And as you can see, the dire side only really see this. The Radiant, well, they've got one ward down that spots the Ancient Apparition and a defensive one by their tier one top, which is still up here 22 minutes into the game. Just another access point to that Roche pit that they've been able to keep on the map. Matthew, cooldown efficiency. Help. Help. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Midas a creep, you stupid ho. Jump forward, RP is gonna find the CK. It's the lyrics of the song, guys. I don't actually think Matthew's a stupid ho. But CK a little bit far out. 
And the whole time I was still clicking on the clockwork, he just used his Midas, boys. So two big wins for Sacred. Now they'll jump into the Roche pit looking for a third. Beautiful RP from King Tekka, uh, although he did have vision nearby, so not as if it was blind. Um, but it was valuable for sure. Now bottom lane, Masoku gonna jump forward. Oh, he's gonna get stunned up by the smash. Silence is there too. He's just gonna get bl obliterated as valiantly he tries to defend his tier two. But Infamous will be fine to trade that for the Roche and they may grab a Sand King kill as well. Orb will fly through. Coid, Coil, not Coid. Coil even gonna be used there. They do have a Desolator TA though, bottom lane. They are gonna have to address this. Uh, she will push rather quickly. See, I said it again. I don't know. Poor staff out and TP away for Pepita, but he will at least stymie the bleeding for now as he dissuades Sacred from continuing to push forward. And the star player for Sacred Leo has picked up his boots of travel in addition to the Yule Scepter. And continue to get active with the clockwork and the magnus making plays and pushing out the other lanes really puck and t um P ta excuse me the only hero on infamous that can push waves uh, so having puck and juggernaut with the empower to do so on the opposite sides is a pretty big advantage jump forward papita's gonna get yules up yeah, this is the kind of stuff i was talking about throws his orb down blinks forward yules is him just to uh, delay things out, but then jots back, knowing he's safe, uh, doesn't have any backup nearby, but hanging around, you know, if he finds a straggler here, they do have this vision on the cliff, and if he's to find a straggler in the lane, can coil him up, request TPs, and Pepita is hanging around here, top lane, rotations through on the east side, though, from the Magnus, and now TPs from Matthew as well. Epicenter gonna come through, and it connects onto three, doing a lot of damage, but a big RP. Omni Slash gonna come through as well. King Tekka and Benjaz are shredding through Infamous. They take out the TA, the CK, and the ES, and the Waning Rift, double kill for Leo Style, will finish off the Sand King as well. All they lose is Matthew, and from the grave, he communicates well played to his teammates. Sacred baiting them in with a TP the RP right there even though a good epicenter came through from the Sand King The reactionary RP and the full-on combo from Ben Jazz and Leo style is enough to win them that fight rather handedly Handily Excuse me So four heroes down for another five seconds the tier two at least will drop in Sacred's favor but doesn't feel like they can get much more. Though They do, however, get... Well, this ward was already up. They do, however, get this ward down. So a little bit more information for them to perhaps facilitate pickoffs into taking this tier two out. Top lane, King Tekka under tower vision. Okay, he went for the blink. Maybe he forgot he didn't have skewer. <laughs> he will turn to empower the juggernaut, however. Ben Jazz. Has a Manta available. Whiffs on the Burl Strike. Does the Sanking. Now Coil hits onto two. Stinger in trouble. Manta's going to be there. Rocket Flare brings him low. The Illusion Orb finishes him off. And Benjaz takes out the CK. Masoku dies on the south side of the fight. Benjaz going to continue to press forward. Hook shot from Matthew is just going to be into his Juggernauts behind. But it'll give them enough to go on Pepita. And they'll get the TA triple kill for Leo Styles Puck. Again, I talked about it and Infamous have to know how good this player is on Puck. They give it to him this game. We'll see if they think better of it next game. He's already level 20. 22, excuse me. Will dodge the phase shift here and orb himself away. There is a Blink Burrow Strike available from the Sand King, but it seems as if, well, maybe Matthew gets caught here, but most of Sacred should make it out alive. Rocket Flare will cancel the blink. Nicely played by the clockwork and put the blink on cooldown, I should say. And now Pepita. Mid lane. Rocket Flare is there again from Matthew. Now they'll jump forward towards mid. 
Meanwhile, Hookshot is going to find the TA, though. Matthew, he's probably out in no man's land. Jump forward. RP being queued up. Catches on to one, at least. Ice Blast will fly through, but the skewer back into the hands of the Juggernaut. And Leo Styles Puck, they'll take out the TA. A lot of Radiant Heroes low. Can they finish them off? They take out the Magnus and the Clockwork. And now Bench is getting to work with the Omni Slash. The Burrow Strike will not connect once again from the Sand King as Leo Styles looking to chase forward. Coil will whiff. Earth Spirit makes it out to the north. Ben Jazz blinks up, though, before the earn tick. Needs a couple right clicks. Can't get it just yet. TP, though, into mid lane from Leo Style and Orb. He jaunts. Schofield trying to guess, right? <laughs> Playing nicely on the Earth Spirit, creating some space for his squad with the Blink Tiger. Uh, and we'll roll back into the hands of Leo Style. Oh, boy. Four heroes dead, two of which have buyback. They're just the supports, though. And that is going to mean that with his butterfly, Ben Jazz makes quick work of the tower in mid lane. In Han, this hero is called Swift Blade. And his blade looks extra swift at this point. Manta Scotty Blade Fury. I played Dota before Han, guys. Don't worry. Don't call me a Han trash. I'm Dota trash. Oh, one lane Arax taken in the mid lane. Perhaps getting a little greedy here top. Leo Style's a bit low on mana, but they'll get the melee Arax with the spin. Benjaz will blink up to the north, avoid the Ice Blast. Masoku will try to TP out. It's optimistic, but Leo Style covers him with the silence, and the CK cannot get the, the Chaos Bolt off. Leo Style, though, he's rather low on mana here. Don't know if he can make it out. Has the Yule Scepter, has a blink, does not have TP mana, and a nicely timed Burl Strike from Stinger will keep him in place. Now Matthew's Clockwork in trouble and will be taken out. Pepita finishes him there. Still, though, just the Clockwork lost is more than a win. And now they're looking to fight here. Jump forward, and somehow RP is going to be there onto the TA. Benja's in trouble. GG is called. I mean, you can call it premature. But certainly, this game looked out of hand for Infamous and Sacred. Off the back of great play from, I want to say, everyone. I know I keep harping on the Leo-style puck. 